Hi there! Welcome to my channel. In the past few videos, we spent a lot of time to install a model from Meta called Seamless M40. At this time, Seamless M40 is the latest model from Meta that does direct speech to speech translation, which is what I'm interested in. But this model does more than speech to speech translation. So it is a model that can take both speech and text as an input, and it can do lots of tasks such as speech to speech translation, speech to text, text to speech, text to text, and also automatic speech recognition. So this is truly a multilingual, multitask, and multimodal. And it supports over 101 languages. In the previous video, we also saw the list of languages that it supports. However, in the previous videos, where the focus was mainly to install the FearSeek 2 library and a library called Seamless underscore communication, and we also made sure the installation was correct by running this command line called m4 predict so what we did was we simply tested out this task called speech to speech translation using a command line called m40 underscore predict that was all good but we barely scratched the surface of this model so far my goal is to dive deeper in today's video to actually try to do try to use this model for inference but not by just using command line tool so first of all why is that important so usually you might have a ta you might have a use case which in my case uh, was the case i wanted to translate a batch of audio files from one language to another language which means i didn't want to rely on this command line because that would mean that I have to put the name of the audio file one by one and run this command for each audio file one by one, which is time consuming and not very practical. So there has to be a way to be able to process a batch of audio files and let the model translate them or transcribe them, whatever task you are interested in, all at once. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. Like how do we process a batch of audios and do inference on that batch of audios. So that's the focus of today's video. For that, in order to learn more, we'll just go and read this inference readme and understand how the inference is actually done. Okay, so like we said, it can do lots of tasks, but we will focus today just on speech-to-speech -speech translation. So once we understand how we do speech-to-speech -speech translation, the same strategy should apply for the rest of the tasks with my minor modifications as you can see here in terms of what inputs uh, you need and what type of uh, other tags you might need. Let's just focus on speech-to-speech -speech translation. So rather than using this command line what we will do is we will actually try to understand how the inference is actually done behind the scenes so here they say when we run the inference it first calls a calls this translator object so this is instantiated when we first try to do the inference so once we instantiate translator object then we can use then we can use this object to do the prediction which in our case is speech to speech translation for as many audios as we want so as you can see the examples here so these are just some essential things so make sure you have seamless communication um, fear seek 2 properly installed so we just import them then the first thing we need to do is just instantiate a translator object 
So we instantiate this translator object and we tell it what model we want to use. In this case, seamless large. They also have a medium model. So you, you tell which model you want to use. And then we also specify which vocoder we want to use. And then we move on to the next step. So once we instantiate this translator object, then simply we can just uh, use it for translation. So here they're giving an example for two, two tasks, speech to speech and text to speech. So for speech to speech, it's going to give us two outputs. It's going to also give us the trans, uh, it's also going to give us the text in the target language and it is also going to give us the speech which is a raw waveform in the target language and this is just the sampling rate so we have already instantiated the translator object above here and then you just use the predict function and then here you give the path to the audio that you want to translate and you give it the task, which in our case is speech to speech translation. And here you give the tag of the language to which you want to translate. So once that is done, this actually does the prediction, in this case, speech to speech translation. Then you can save the output, which is the translated text and the waveform, wherever you want to store it. So in this case, we can just use this uh, torch audio dot save and we can simply save the audio using this command and here actually this command will not save the translated text so if you want to also save the translated text you will have to write your own code um, you can either I'll show you how I did but uh, just remember that torch audio will not save the text it will only save the waveform that was generated. So that's pretty much it. And recall, uh, sorry, see if you see, it, they also have this line here, wave uh, sampling rate. Um, I have not used, I don't think this was relevant for at least what I was doing. So for me, I was since I wanted to do just speech to speech translation, after instantiating the translator object, I use the predict function to do the translation and then I simply save the audio and also the text. So now that's just the framework. Now I'll just show you an example of how I implemented. By the way, this is nothing fancy, just some for loops and stuff. So if you know how to code, which I'm sure you do, because if you are studying this level of um, if you're doing this level of project, I'm sure you know how to code. So just bear with me if this is too simple, but I'll just, just want to show you how I implemented. So this code right here is adapted from what we just saw on the seamless uh, GitHub readme. So here, my goal again is to do the translation speech to speech on a batch of audio files. So the first thing, we just import the libraries and then we instantiate the translator uh, translator object as they as this as they said and I'm using the large model then this is just a for loop and this for loop is basically it's applying the predict function which we saw here on all the files that are in my directory. So here I have an input directory that has, let's say 3000 audios in some source language. So I take my input directory and I just use a for loop and I basically do the prediction. This is the command, the, sorry, the predict function. I just use the, I just apply the prediction on, on all of the audios in that directory that I specify. And once I, is, uh, for each one, then I save that into an output directory that I specify here. So that's what I'm doing in this loop. 
So there's one other thing that I'm also doing is because I'm, I was also interested in getting the saving the translated text in the target language. So for that, simply you can create a empty list to begin with, and then you can append to this list in the for loop after running the predict. So this predict is going to give you the translated audio. It's going to give you the translated text. And then simply um, you can take this translated text and then you can simply append it to the, let's see, so this is what I'm doing. So you, you can simply take this, um, you can simply take this um, empty list and you can append it to append it the translated text. So as you can see here, uh, I'm doing a little bit more than just uh, just storing the text. What I'm also storing is I was interested in storing the mapping of the audio file to its translated text. So that's what that's why you see I have two things here, the file name of the translated audio and the corresponding translated text. Again, this is just for my specific needs here. Uh, what all you need to get out of this code is if we want to do if we want to process a batch of audios and if we want to apply the prediction function on a batch of audios then this is how we would we, this is how you could do this is one of the ways you could do it so that's all for this video if you want a copy of this code I will be able to share that no big deal so if you need a copy of this code just leave a comment below and I'll share it. So that's all for this video. I hope this was helpful. And in the next videos, we will explore a few more things. So what we may do is we may try to fine tune this. So, so far we have just done the uh, prediction, which means we just used the inference. But you can also do other things. You can do evaluate and you can do fine tuning. I'm interested in also fine tuning. So maybe this is what I will do next. So if you're interested, stay tuned and please subscribe to my channel if you find the content useful. And I would love to have you on my channel. With that, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.